Welcome to the Lake Powell and Glen Canyon Dam update for June 2024. The water level at America's second largest reservoir is 3,573 feet, 2 inches above mean sea level. That's an increase of an incredible 11 feet, 2 inches since our last Lake Powell update. The current water elevation is 83 feet above minimum power pool and 127 feet below the full pool elevation. Hello and welcome to Time Bomb. We begin our Lake Powell update with a review of the snowpack in the upper Colorado River Basin. How will this early melting of the snowpack impact water levels at Lake Powell later this year? Next up, we take a look at Lake Powell's water level statistics and discuss the incredible increase in water levels at Lake Powell. Then finally, we discuss a crazy new plan to fix the broken river outlet works at the Glen Canyon Dam. This'll be a fun episode, so hit that like button. Tell me off in the comments section. This is Time Bomb. Let's get started. The snowpack in the upper Colorado River Basin concluded the winter season on April 1st at 113% of average. This above average snowpack is very welcome news, considering Lake Powell is still only 35% full. A healthy runoff from this year's snowmelt is crucial to refilling Lake Powell. However, an above average year of snow does not guarantee an above average runoff. In fact, the National Weather Service recently estimated that Lake Powell will receive 5.7 million acre feet of water from April to July as the snow melts off the mountains, which is only 80% of the normal snowmelt runoff. So why is the runoff so low when we have had an above average snowpack? Well, three factors determine how much water ends up in Lake Powell. First, the amount of snowpack in the Colorado River Basin. The second factor is the springtime temperatures. Warmer weather can cause snow to melt faster. And the third factor is soil moisture. Dry soil absorbs snow melting snow, leaving less water for reservoirs. Today, forecasters are saying that soil moisture across the entire Colorado River Basin, including both the upper and lower basin, is below normal, and springtime temperatures have been warmer than normal. According to the Colorado Climate Center at, Cl at Colorado State University, this year's snowmelt is the largest 14-day loss of snowpack before the end of April since the start of data collection in the 1980s. Now let's check out Lake Powell's water level statistics. Let's see how the early snow melt is impacting water levels. This is a chart of Lake Powell's water level for the 2024 water year. From the beginning of the water year on October 1st, 2023, until mid-April, the water level at Lake Powell was on a steady decline. This is typical behavior. The water that would normally run into Lake Powell is locked up in the form of snow and ice. And while less water is flowing into the lake, water still needs to be released for power generation and to meet downstream water demands. In mid-April, the water level reversed course and started to increase at a rate of 1.6 inches per day. Then, on May 21st, that rate of increase jumped to over 7 inches per day. All of that water rushing into Lake Powell is the re result of this year's early snowmelt. This is a chart of the inflows to Lake Powell for the 2024 water year. From the beginning of the water year to mid-April, inflows remained under 20,000 cubic feet per second. Then in mid-April, inflows started to increase above 20,000 cubic feet per second due to some rainstorms and some early snowmelt. On May 21st, inflows jumped to over 60,000 cubic feet per second, and it remains at that level today. Inflows should remain high for at least the next few weeks as more of the snow melt makes its way down into Lake Powell. And here is a chart of outflows from Lake Powell through the Glen Canyon Dam. Outflows from the Glen Canyon Dam do not fluctuate like inflows. Outflows are heavily regulated and predetermined by various laws and agreements to meet the demands of downstream users. For the month of May, 600,000 acre feet was released from Lake Powell. In June, 620,000 acre feet of water is scheduled to be released. Dam operators are currently releasing water at a rate of 10,000 cubic feet per second during weekdays when power demand is higher, and at a rate of, of 9,000 cubic feet per second during weekends. 
This highly predictable outflow rate means the increased inflows will continue to increase Lake Powell's water levels. This is great news for Lake Powell, but it's not such great news for Lake Mead, whose water level is declining and will continue to do so for most likely the rest of the year, but that is a topic for next week's Lake Mead update. Earlier this year, the Bureau of Reclamation released this memo, reporting that four giant tubes, known as the River Outlet Works, shouldn't be relied on as the only means of getting river water through the dam at low elevations. That memo ignited a firestorm of opinions and questions. Specifically, how will the upper basin states deliver water to the lower basin states if the Glen Canyon Dam can't deliver the water? Since the release of that memo, the Bureau of Reclamation has been tight-lipped on the subject. Are they working on a solution? If so, what does that solution look like? Then finally, tucked away deep in the bowels of the Bureau of Reclamation's database, I found this list of grants. Included in the list is $9 million to fund the recoding of the river outlet works to ensure the capability to meet downstream water commitments. So Reclamation is definitely looking at solutions and already has obtained funding to implement a temporary fix. Apparently, they are planning to coat the pipes that have been deteriorated by cavitation with an epoxy. This epoxy coating will protect the pipes against your corrosion, extending the life of the pipes. But this is just a temporary fix, not a permanent solution. Does Reclamation have any plans for a permanent fix? Well, several sources have confirmed that the Bureau of Reclamation is examining the possibility of drilling tunnels directly through the Glen Canyon Dam. The purpose of these tunnels is to ensure that water can pass through the dam at low water levels. These tunnels will most likely be non-power tunnels, meaning that the tunnels will allow water to pass through the dam at low levels, but will not generate electricity. The primary goal of these tunnels would be to prevent a situation where elevations at Lake Powell fall so low that no water could get through the dam to serve the lower Colorado River Basin cities, including Tucson, Phoenix, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, and San Diego. Now, this is not the only solution the Bureau of Reclamation is considering. The new tunnel project is among several options the Bureau is looking at to temper concerns about the ability to deliver Colorado River water through the 61-year-old dam. Unfortunately, I do not have any information on the other plans yet. Hopefully, Reclamation will release more information soon. Hey, that's all I have for this episode. I'll be back with another video next week. In the meantime, please check out this video that explains the broken pipe situation at Glen Canyon Dam in more detail. Also, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate your support.